Hey guys, Mike Build, welcome back. Today we have another budget lithium iron phosphate battery to review and try out. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour. It's by a company called Astruno, Astruno, Astruno. Y'all already know the names are crazy. They have a million of them out there. My goal is to test as many as I can get my hands on. This is a pretty standard size one. Kind of a standard size that they've been coming in for years, not one of the small ones. It has a 100 amp continuous discharge rating. They rate it for 4,000 cycles. So in this video, we're gonna charge it, do a capacity test, discharge it, see how many amps we can pull, see if it has a high current protection feature that works. Then we're gonna disassemble the battery and judge the build quality and see what we get for 130 bucks. This is a very budget friendly battery. Hopefully the build quality is pretty good and we might have a winner on our hands. So let's take a look. It's actually got gold color terminals. So that's kind of interesting. Normally they're all silver. Nothing on the back. It's a pretty plain label battery. Although I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot like the other cheap batteries we reviewed before. Here it is next to what you would call like a mini one. This is a group 24 size battery. So it's just a standard size battery, nothing crazy going on there. And in the package of the battery, you do get the terminals right here with the little covers that they all come with. And then you get a user manual. I always kind of like skimming through these on all the batteries I buy just because some of these have good information. So if you're new to the battery world, always kind of skim through this. A lot of the information you see here is gonna be the same for most batteries you're gonna mess with, but it's good information to know. So always skim through that. In order to charge our battery, we're gonna use our six amp battery charger. So we're gonna get this thing connected. And there we go, we got a red light. So as soon as that turns green, we're gonna get this thing set up and start the capacity test. So we got the battery fully topped up. I'm gonna head our reset our shunt to 100%. We set the amp hours and rating to 100, and then we reset the total amp hours right here. The battery is fresh off the charger. We're gonna put a 0.2 C load on the battery. So that's gonna be about 20 amps. Fire up my inverter. We're gonna use a Sun Gold Power low frequency 12 volt inverter, 3000 watt in order to put a 20 amp load. And there we go, it's about 24 amps. So that's kind of the lowest I can set the charge verter. So we're gonna let this run and once the battery completely dies, we're gonna see how much capacity we get. All right guys, here we are with the capacity test complete. We're not off to a good start, unfortunately, because all we were able to get is 89 amp hours. So I'm actually gonna run the test again to see if maybe the battery wasn't fully charged, even though every single time I do a capacity test, I always do it hot off the charger. I make sure the battery is completely fully charged just so we don't have any issues. So I'm gonna retest this thing to see if maybe we just got a dud or if maybe there's something else going on with this battery. But this is kind of one of the first batteries I've had that didn't pull full capacity. All right, guys, I actually ended up capacity testing this battery a total of three separate times, and each time the most I was able to get out of it was 90 amp hours. So I came very close to just scrapping this whole video because this battery is not delivering 100 amp hours, and it just kind of sucks because I really can't recommend a battery you can't even get full capacity out of. However, I am gonna complete the testing just so this isn't a complete waste. We can still all learn something from it. So now we're gonna hook it up to do a full power discharge test with the big inverter and a space heater and we're still going to take it apart and look and maybe see what's going on if they're just using really cheap cells or underrated cells not really sure what's going on with that but we are pulling consistently 90 amp hours i'm not able to get anywhere near 100 out of this battery and i've discharged it at a very low rate didn't really make a huge difference it was very consistently 90 amp hours so i'm not really sure what's going on there but we're going to continue testing this thing anyways that way this isn't all for nothing all right test is as always we're going to be tested oh let me reset the state of charge this battery has been recharged so we're going to get the best performance we can get out of it there we go we're going to use a 1500 watt space heater this should give us about 130 amps of draw and if we need to we will add additional load to boost up the power hopefully you guys can see the meter okay and we're going to be using the sun gold 3000 watt low frequency inverter to put the load so let's connect one space heater. All right, that's low. Kick it on the high. Wow, the voltage drop is really bad on this thing. We're already down 11 and a half volts. Pulling 137 amps. Voltage recovered a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get some more load. What else can we plug in? We can plug in a 30 amp battery charger. See what that does. All right, 30 amp battery charger on. I'm gonna turn the heater back on high. Something just is complaining. Probably because the voltage is low. We're at 11.2 volts. 195 amps, not shutting off. That's a lot of power, guys. Not shutting off but the inverter is not happy. All right, well, I guess I'll call the test there. 196 amps is probably as hard as I want to push this battery. I will say this, the fact that the high current protection doesn't work means you could probably use this in a golf cart and probably not have too many problems if you're not pulling more than 190 amps. Plus golf carts only pull a peak and then they kind of settle down. All right, let's crack this thing open and see how bad or good it is. Oh yeah. All right, let's see what we have here. Let's see what the cover peeled back reveals. A lot of goo on the terminal, so they don't want those coming loose. Really nice, I guess. Big piece of foam to help put pressure down. All right, there's the BMS. It's very generic looking. Bolted terminals though, that's nice. That's better than soldering. Assuming these are, these are not loose. Okay, this is interesting. Peel back this fish paper stuff. We actually have a cylindrical cell design going on here. So that may be why we're only getting 90 amp hours out of this. Maybe they're using underrated cells and the cells are actually rated correctly 
but they only put enough in there to give you 90 amp hours. They're just advertising this as a 100 amp hour battery. Really hard to see, but the cells are actually potted in the bottom of the case. So they essentially took the whole pack, shoved it in the pack and put a bunch of potting all around it, which makes this thing very, very secure. So that's a really good way to build it. And the BMS is also very secured, but I think that's just kind of glued down on the fish paper. Here's kind of a better shot of those cylindrical cells. So we more than likely have, I'm gonna to try to see how many cells are in parallel because that'll give us the amp hours. Maybe we can divide and figure out how many amp hours the cells are actually rated for. So there's one cell, two cell, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells. It is possible that these are, I don't know what they'd be if you have seven cells. So for the main positive and main negatives, there's actually, you actually have a huge bus bar right here if y'all look. So there's a huge bus bar here, a huge bus bar here, and then there's probably four groups. You have group one, group two, group three, and group four wired in series to give you your 12 volt. And that's pretty much it. There's really no way to get this out of the case without completely destroying this because they're potted in there, but they look like big cylindrical cells, maybe the diameter of a D battery and probably about four inches long. There's no data I can see on the cells that's obvious. If anybody knows what kind of BMS that is, maybe chime in in the comments, let me know. So this is very unique. This is the first time I've seen this battery design and I've taken apart a lot of batteries, as you guys know. I've never seen it with the cylindrical cells. Normally we always have the big square prismatic cells. So very interesting design. If this thing would have pulled full capacity, honestly, with this build quality, the way the cells are secured in there, and the fact that they're cylindrical cells with cell holders, as you can see, I would have gave this thing a really good score but because they're advertising this as a 100 amp hour battery and we're only getting 90, it's deceiving to people and you're not gonna get the full capacity. There you go, guys, kind of sucks. We didn't get full capacity, but other than that, this battery is pretty good, but I can't recommend it based on that. If they were to re-rate this as a 90 amp hour battery and it was a truly 90 amp hour battery and the price reflected it, it'd be a different story. Let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you guys have any of these and you're using them. And if you guys have bought one of these and tested it yourself, please let me know in the comments if they've changed anything or updated anything. Or if you're just using these and you don't care, I don't know. Maybe you got a really good deal on one and the capacity doesn't bother you. But that's going to do it, guys. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next video.